Hello there, and welcome to episode five of the Owl Diary. This week's Owl Diary is brought to you by Pebble the Burrowing Owl. Well, that would be quite a unique idea, wouldn't it? Hi there, so the Owl Diary is now a weekly vlog here on YouTube. So this episode five follows on from January's, which was episode four, if you like. And I suppose I should start by filling you in on all the things that have been happening over the last few months. Well, not much, because we've had that lockdown. So we have had a few bits and pieces, and I'll update you on them in this video. I should probably say, this is Pebble. He is a burrowing owl. He's now four years old, and these are native to the Americas, and they like to run around on the ground, catching insects and small reptiles, and little mice and things. And they're called a burrowing owl because they will hide underground either in old rabbit burrows, for example, and even been known to scrape into the ground with their long legs to bury themselves momentarily to hide from predators. So this week has seen the return of static displays. We are now allowed to do that. We're not allowed to do any flying shows or anything that gets a crowd, but we are allowed to do some static displays. So a little bit of that work going back on. And then just a few weeks, we should be able to start the actual flying shows again when we get to that step three, fingers crossed. And one of the static displays recently, Pebble here, spotted something in the sky. A little distance away, there's some construction work going on, and there was a drone. And he saw that drone, probably thought it was a bird of prey or some other risky predator, and then did this. <laughs> So that certainly provided some very interesting visual stimulation for Pebble. So last week I did the first full day school visit that I've done in over a year. It was really wonderful to do it as well. I did a 90 minute session, then a two hour session, and another 90 minute session. And I thought I would find it quite exhausting, but in the end it was just so enjoyable that the day went really quickly. We had lovely sunshine all day. We did the visit outside, of course, due to um, the various restrictions we've got. So we had all that lovely fresh air, and I took some exotic animals, including the corn snakes, the big Madagascan hissing cockroaches, and the children and some of the teachers were able to actually handle these reptiles. And I also took Ollie, uh, my male eagle owl. He did a bit of flying between some of the apparatus in the play area they had there. And Bailey did some lovely big long flights. He's our male barn owl. I also flew the Harris Hawks. And I talked about what a keystone species is. I talked about the ecosystem. I told them lots of facts about the birds and the reptiles and how they survive in the wild, their amazing senses and things like that. And the children and teachers said they really, really enjoyed it. We even had one teacher tell me afterwards that she sadly lost her daughter during the lockdowns and something they've been doing to cope with that is to reconnect with nature, go on walks. They've been watching the tadpoles turn into frogs. So she said the visit for her was just wonderful. So we've done quite a bit of rescue work over the last few months, including a male barn owl that was unfortunately struck by a vehicle in the North Yorkshire Moors. We took it back, took it to the vets. It had an X-ray and that revealed breaks to the bones on both wings. It had a really thorough examination at the vets, but unfortunately the chances of it surviving properly, healing, and actually be able to hunt and breed and survive properly in the wild were very, very low. Even if they pinned the wings together, there'd be a risk that they wouldn't heal properly, a risk of infection and other problems like that. So collectively, we decided the best action was unfortunately to have the owl put down. And this is just a tale that happens too often. We get many birds in which have severe problems, brain damage, Issues that mean they just wouldn't survive in the wild. Hunting is very difficult. And the barn owl numbers are far less than they used to be. They're not an endangered species. They are luckily classed as least concern. But there are certainly far less of them in the wild than we used to have, which is unfortunately true of many wildlife species in this country and around the world. Now, didn't an old MP, maybe a, a prime minister in the past, once say, education, education, education? Well, we believe that anyone who runs an animal business with birds of prey, exotic animals or goats or whatever it might be, has 
kind of a duty to educate people from very young to very old and everyone in between about wildlife, about animals in the wild and how they survive, about how you look after animals in captivity or captive care as I like to call it. And that really is the heart of the ethos of what we do, educating people about the animals. So when we're running our handling displays, we ensure to tell people facts about the birds or facts about the reptiles they might be holding. There are lots of interesting things to learn and we do feel it is very important. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video and please keep an eye on the channel for more videos coming up in the near future. Right then, Pebble. Let's go for a walk, shall we?